And I remember my guidance counselor said to me when I, she said, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I'd like to be a filmmaker and an, and an actor and then also work in public service maybe down the line. Yeah. And she looked at me and said, well, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Where is Awful? she now? I mean, I don't know. but No, because I'd like her to know that you worked in the I would like White her to House. Know. <laughs> Cow pen, this is your drink. This is my drink. <laughs> I love New it. New York City tap water. Central Park. Really good. You can't beat it. You don't have to pull your hair out of the way like <laughs> I do. Mm. It's refreshing. It's cold. It's refreshing. It is cold. It's a hot summer day. And it's spring water. It comes from the it's Catskills. Perfect. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. Isn't that. it crazy? Yeah. They say that New York City tap water is better than bottled water. Yes. They yeah. they do say that. I th I mean I don't like bottled water. You know, there were other alcoholic drink options I was considering, but <laughs> yes. it's early in the morning. Yes. Um, which meant whiskey might have been. I mean, I just would have been drunk all day. Right. I would have kept going. It's a little day drinking. You know, yeah. I would have tweeted things that I would have regretted. All right, I have to start with the question I always ask, which yeah. is how the heck did you get here? And I don't mean Central Park. Uh, how, how did How did you become Cal Penn? And that's not even your real name. It's not, no, it's a screen name. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in New Jersey. Yeah, and I'm I, sorry. I love New Jersey, are you kidding? I grew up in upstate New York. Okay, The fine, 518, fine. I have I to shout it, it out, I'm it. sorry. I'm no, sorry. I, I grew up in the suburbs. My uh, <laughs> my dad worked in the city his whole, whole life. Um, and so, the reason I bring up New Jersey, we yeah. had... Uh, and I'm only kidding about New Jersey. I don't want to... No, and that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's the New Jersey I just cut you because... Uh -huh. yeah. I got that. Uh, this got awkward really quick. You know. <laughs> the, <laughs> okay, no, but you grew up in New Jersey. Yeah, so we had a really great uh, public high school system. Mm -hmm. Each of these high schools had a magnet program for something different. So one of them, if you were interested in business as a 15-year-old, right. there was a magnet program you could apply to international studies or yeah. uh, and then performing arts. I was going to guess you were performing I was, arts. I was actually international studies for the first two years and then performing arts for the next two years because okay. I didn't want to pick one. And <laughs> But I really, to, to have the exposure and the training to the arts right outside of New York City oh, yeah. at that caliber, I didn't realize what a privilege that was. I mean, as a public school student, right? right. Until I went to college and then started working as an actor. So I always bring that up because I, I really credit that opportunity with a lot. My parents are immigrants. Setting you up. Yeah, they're from India, they're right? They're from India. They didn't have an arts background. It's obviously very scary for any parent, I think, to be like, hey, I moved to America in search of a better life. What are you going to do? Be a doctor? I'm like, no, I'm going to be an actor, I think. How did the transition from New Jersey to LA, right? You go, you major in sociology yeah. and acting or film? Basically, yeah. And I remember my guidance counselor said to me when I, she said, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I'd like to be a filmmaker and an, and an actor and then also work in public service maybe down the line. Yeah. And she looked at me and said, well, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I'm like, what Ooh, a, where is awful, she now? I mean, I don't know, but. No, because I'd like her to know that you worked in the I would like White her to House. Know. So I, I just remember thinking as a, as a 15 year old, this, I, this has to be the worst advice, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think what she meant to say was that those are two professions that are incredibly difficult mm -hmm. that also don't offer financial stability. And so that's something right. you should know before you, you try to approach it. think about it, that, right? yeah. I think it came out as the way that you talk to a 15 year old in her mind was you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Let's do this together. How does Harold and Kumar happen? Uh, I can't, I haven't been able to find the story all right. of how that happened. So, I, uh, it and was, I'm sorry to dwell on that one thing. It's no, not your whole identity. Kumar is way cooler than I will ever be, and I am happy <laughs> to do Harold and Kumar 57 when I'm 90 years old. That kind of job stability, I would love to have. Do you like White Castle? Uh, you know, it's interesting. When we shot the first uh, Harold and Kumar movie, the White Castle one, I was a vegetarian. No! And, but White Castle at that point didn't have a veggie burger. Now they have Impossible Sliders. <laughs> right, right. And they're really good. Did you have uh, to pretend to like? The, the prop the... person made uh, soy patties for us, or for me. Okay. And I think John ate the right, frozen the ones that came, the regular ones. <laughs> So uh, I was at a friend's birthday party yeah. and was introduced to John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg, two guys from New Jersey who had written a script called Harold and Camargo to White Castle. Yeah. And the first thing John said to me was, hey, you don't have an Indian accent. 
And I was really off put by this, right? I'm like, who the hell is this guy? You're like, no, I grew up in New Jersey. Right. What he meant was he had seen this film I did with Ryan Reynolds called Van Wilder uh... and thought that I genuinely had an Indian accent and was curious if I could put on an American accent for a movie that he had written. I see. Uh, and he told me about the script, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, and I thought, um, this sounds funny, send it to me. He sent it to me. I thought it was the funniest thing I'd read. Did you think anyone would see it? So we weren't sure. I, I thought at the time it's like the worst title for a movie ever. It's, Outside well, of the Well, now Northeast it seems like Midwest, a great title. Now it, so <laughs> it came out and it tanked at the box office, which most people forget. It didn't do very well at all. And then it shows up on HBO and the DVD gets sort of dropped and fans discover it on their own and they start buying it and becomes hosting watch thing. parties and becomes yeah. this cult following that gave us a second and a third one. So when you ask about that, I always have such a special place in my heart for this franchise because it was all fan driven. Mm. It's just exquisite. Biggest challenge in your career? I think the biggest challenge, uh, which is I think similar to a lot of careers, is that entry point. How yeah. do you actually enter, get in? Uh, get in? And I was very frustrated because when I was starting out, um, you know, almost everything was a stereotype, right? This is 20 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, and I played a lot of them, and I happily yeah. played them and got a credit on my resume and got experience. I think the reason it was so frustrating and so challenging was you don't think at the time that you have any agency to change anything. And this sort of ties into some of the greatest advice that I got, which is from a, a casting director who said, you know, a lot of those stereotypes, they're, they're not there because somebody's purposely trying to offend anybody. They just think that, that they're trying to make people laugh and they think that that's the best way to do it. So if you have a problem with it, or if you just think you can do better, if you get the job, have a conversation with the writers and offer up ideas. Offer up ideas that are funnier than what they came so up with. So change it from within. You end up working as an actor, you have really great movies, you have parts on, on House. Mm -hmm. And then you end up at the White House. What? So in 2007, I was on the show House and loving it. It's, I was not a big fan of politics, but I'd read Obama's books um, and had the chance to see him basically speak at some early campaign events. And I was kind of moved and I thought, well, he's asking for help. Maybe I could go volunteer for a couple of days in Iowa. And I kind of fell in love with the people who were working for him. And I thought, wow, these are smart, very driven, intelligent people. And so I continued with, uh, I guess, 26 other states. All of which is to say, by the end of that campaign, it was a very contentious primary, and then, uh, and then general election, and he won. And there was an opportunity to serve in the White House, kind of doing what I had been doing on the campaign, which was outreach to young people. Worked on the Arts Policy Committee. I was pursuing a graduate degree in, or certificate, sorry, in cultural diplomacy. Um, you were pursuing a degree in cultural diplomacy. A certificate, that what you said? yeah. I, should I back up? I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> no, I'm doing I it just, in my head. I'm doing the fast forward because I'm not sure what's boring and what's not. It's not boring. It's just un, again uh, unusual, right? So I'm that, a huge nerd. This goes back to my <laughs> guidance counselor, right? Like yeah. that. That uh, you want to do policy wonk stuff yeah. and be an actor. Yeah. And, and what's wrong I with that? I think you can do it. What's on your playlist right now? Right Anything. now, there's there's a lot of Elton John. There we go. Had the chance to see him on his farewell tour, and it, nice. of course, was amazing. Uh, so a lot of Elton John, a lot of um, Toad the Wet Sprocket. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's chance a throwback. Wow. Uh, Most Def and Talib. Okay, all right. Um, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. So it's kind of all Ella of, Fitzgerald all of thrown Paisley. in with that. Okay. Brad Pitt. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, I like music. You're but eclectic. I there he is. We need your help. We're trying to become citizens. You seem pretty American to me. I thought I was. Now I gotta take like some dumb history test so I don't get sent back to Moldova. Where is Moldova? I don't know, man. What do I look like, a book? So, you have a new project. I do. And it's on NBC, full yes. disclosure. It's called Sunnyside. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's an idea that I had about five years ago. My manager, Dan Spilo, and I were tossing around an idea. And he said, if you, in a dream scenario, if you got to create your own show, what would that look like? Yeah. I don't know, man. There are two things that I love. I, I love America and I love making people laugh. And if I can do that in a way that's fun, like shows that I grew up watching. Remember that show, Head of the Class? Yeah. So something like Head of the Class or Fresh Prince. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, Seinfeld and Friends, obviously. Right. Shows that take place Cheers. in New York City. Cheers. <laughs> Iconic shows, but that, um, that feature characters that you haven't seen before. That's kind of what I want to do. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. So, um... 
I, I don't know. I'm super excited because I it, it's I was on a, a really fun show called Designated Survivor for Netflix the last yes. couple of years. Yeah. And it was a drama, and I loved exercising that muscle. But my first love is like that comedy stuff, and so to be able to come back and hopefully make people laugh, I, I'm very much looking forward to.